Hello, I'm Graham and I hope everyone's having a great day and welcome to today's video in which I'm going to explain how the focal length reducer works. Now sometimes these are called speed boosters after the company that developed these metabones. Speed booster for the fact that you get an extra stop of light gathering when you use the speed booster with your full frame lens on a mirrorless system body. Now there's lots of reviews for these devices here on YouTube but I couldn't find one which actually went into the physics of how these work. So in this video I'm going to show you how I've developed the ray trace diagrams to show you how you actually get a focal length reduction when you use this glass with your full frame camera lens. Now it's worth stating that you can only use these focal length reducers with a crop factor body such as a Micro Four Thirds system or the Canon EOS M. So I've got two focal length reducers. One is the EF EOS M2 for the Canon EOS M series and the other is the EF M2 which is for the Micro Four Thirds system. Both give a 0 0.71 times focal length reduction and claim to give an extra stop of light when you use your full frame lens. Now I keep saying you can only use it with your full frame lens and that's because when you have a full frame DSLR like this one inside we have a mirror which diverts the light through the pentaprism to your eyepiece. So that has to be accommodated for in the light path. So between the back of the lens and the actual sensor in this camera there's a distance of 44 millimeters. When we look at a Micro Four Third system or a uh, Canon EOS M system, if we look at this, the actual flange distance from the front of the flange to the sensor is only 18 millimeters. So there's 26 millimeters difference between a full frame sensor and a crop factor sensor uh, camera in terms of flange distance. Well, you can use a full frame lens on a crop factor body such as the EOS M providing you maintain that 44mm flangeback distance to allow you to get infinity focus. So with a 44mm flangeback distance and the Canon EOS M has an 18mm flangeback distance, if we put a physical coupling in there which has got a 26mm thickness, carries the electrical contacts through from the body of the camera to the lens itself, we can actually mount this and maintain infinity focus. We will have a crop factor of 1.6 applied to the uh, focal length of this lens, so the 50mm becomes an 80mm lens, but we've got that nice f1.4 light gathering ability of this lens, and that is where we gain the advantages of using the full frame glass on this system camera. We can get some nice fast apertures where the inherent native lenses for this uh, camera are very limited at the moment. Now the native lenses are available for the Canon EOS M but they are expensive and there are very few primes. This 32mm prime has got an aperture of f1.4, doesn't have inbuilt stabilisation and costs £500. And again this 22mm pancake f1.8 lens again doesn't have image stabilisation and costs over £200. So we're talking lots of money for these small uh, niche uh, lenses. So the fact that you can use a whole variety of full frame lenses which are now available such as this 85mm 1.8 lens which is great for portraiture we can actually use uh, things like this 100 to 400mm telephoto lens I use it on my Micro Four Thirds it gives me 200 to 800mm effective focal length so I can get some nice wildlife shots using that big lens. So with the speed booster or focal length reducer with the lens system, it causes that image to be converged quicker. So it, um, it happens over a shorter distance. We need to alter the flange back distance. So here the DIM adapter, the e Canon's original EF to ESM adapter, which has a 26 millimeter flange back distance, we end up with a much narrower 21 millimeter flange back distance in the ESM to focal length reducer to accommodate for the fact that the lenses have reduced that amount of flange back distance. Let's look at some images that I've made using this 24 to 105 f4 L series lens which has inbuilt image stabilization. It's a full frame lens I use it on my Canon 5D Mark III and I'm going to use it on the EOS M5 or the M50. 
So first of all, here is an image taken with just the EF to EOS M adapter, no uh, speed reducer, just the plain lens held at that 44 millimeter flange back distance to give you an idea of the image quality of that lens mounted on the EOS M50. So you can see I've got the camera set up with a distance of about uh, two and a half feet away from this subject. Now I'm going to change to the speed boost or focal length reducer and take the same shot from the same distance and keep keeping the same optical axis if I can possibly get it. Now this is the image from the camera taken at the same exposure so it's still f4 I've still got the um, 105 millimeter dialed in on the lens and you can see that immediately we've got a much wider field of view so the actual speed boost or focal length reducer has in fact decrease the focal length we've got a much wider field of view now some people are stating that you're actually getting more depth of field with this speed booster well let's have a look at why that's not true let's put the two images together in photoshop the one from the full frame lens on the adapter and then let's look at the image with the focal length reducer so the one with the focal length reducer is the smallest image so i'm going to enlarge that or scale it up until it's the same size as the one without the focal length reducer. And you can see in the background, the amount of depth of field or the blur on those two characters in the background is exactly the same. So we haven't changed the depth of field. That's been derived by the fact that this is 105 millimeter and the aperture is set to F4. Now we can change the depth of field if we move the camera back to maintain the same actual image size. So if we move the camera forward so it matches the image from the picture taken without the uh, focal length reducer. Now the notion that you're getting more depth of field can only come from the fact that to maintain the same image size you've actually moved forward with the camera to keep that same image size and if you move closer then you'll get more depth of field because of the nature of the lens. So the actual focal length reducer doesn't give you any more depth of field, it keeps the same depth of field and you can get more depth of field if you like by moving towards the, the subject to maintain your image size. I then move to this 70-300 image stabilized uh, lens. Um, again, I shot some images at 70 millimeters with and without the adapter, and then at 300 millimeters just to show the optical quality of the lenses within the focal length reducer. And to my eyes, there's no uh, degradation in the image quality. So the fact that we are condensing that image onto the sensor using this focal length reducer is giving us a benefit. So even if you had lenses that weren't particularly great, you actually might get some uh, optical quality increase by the fact that these are now being uh, compressed into a smaller area. Especially if you're going to be shooting with video, then the image resolution isn't as critical for video needs as it is for stills. Okay, enough, enough waffle. Let's now have a look at some uh, ray trace diagrams for the focal length reducer. But I'll introduce it by showing you some basic equations for uh, lens physics. I'm going to call it Optics 101 just to give you some idea of how a convex lens inverts the image, how the magnification works, where the image is formed uh, relative to its focal point, and then develop the idea with the full frame lens giving an image on a full frame sensor, the full frame lens giving an image on the APS-C sensor, and then the introduction of the uh, Viltrox uh, lens system to allow us to use a APS-C sensor and have the full image circle from that main lens focused onto its um, surface. So let's start and let's have a look at the ray trace diagrams optics 101. Well, when we're dealing with convex lenses, those are ones with the center thicker than the outside edges. The first rule is that any rays parallel to the optical axis pass through the focal point on the image side. So that's the green trace on this diagram. And the second rule states that rays passing through the center pass through in a straight line, and that's the blue trace. The third rule says, rays passing through the object side focal point emerge parallel to the optic axis, and that is the orange trace.
So in this final illustration, we can see all the rays from the object pass through the lens and are focused onto the image side. You can see we've got an object field on the left hand side which is inverted and becomes the image circle on the image side. In this series of diagrams, I'm going to develop the ray trace for a full frame lens imaging onto a full frame sensor. We have the optical axis which passes through the center of the lens and we have the two principal focus points, F1. One is in front of the lens and one is behind the lens. Now the first ray I'm developing is one parallel to the optical axis and as we know that is imaged through the image size F1 and that becomes our exit ray. Our second ray is developed from our object and it passes through the object size printable focus F1 and we know that exits the lens parallel to the optic axis and this is a green trace. So where the green trace intersects the purple trace is where the real inverted image is formed and that's the place where the sensor is fitted. If we were to take every ray from the object size and pass it through the focal point on the imaging side, we would end up with a complete image circle. Now the sensor is arranged so that the diagonal of the sensor is actually covered by the imaging circle. And notice on the image now we've got the inverted cat which shows that the image is inverted on the sensor. Now in this final diagram we can see the full frame camera lens and the full frame sensor. The image circle completely covers the 36 by 24 millimeter sensor. Now if we put the same lens on the APS-C camera, you can see we get the same size image circle, but within that the APS-C sensor is, there's a lot of wasted area there. And that's the area that we're gonna recover when we use the Viltrox M2 adapter. Now in this series of diagrams I'm showing the ray trace developed for the system with the Viltrox M2 adapter. The original image that we've got there outlined in red is the one that's formed by the camera lens. Now with the inclusion of the Viltrox lens which is the one in yellow we add two additional focal points which are F2 in this system. When we add the second lens, the image formed by the full frame lens is used as the object for the image formed by the secondary lens. So in this case, we're going to take a ray from the object and pass it through the main lens object side principal focus. And we know that exits the main lens parallel to the optical axis. So that's the purple trace. Now we know that a ray that's parallel to the optical axis when it hits that second convex lens is focused through its principal point of focus and in this case it's going to be F2. Now for the next ray we have to consider a ray that's passing through the centre of the second convex lens and we know that that would be the image point on the image side. So we can actually project the line backwards from the image to the centre of the lens to get our ray trace. So our new image is formed where we have the intersection of the lower purple ray trace and the rescaled line back from the image to the center of the convex lens in the Viltrox system. So this is where the new image is formed. So where the new image is formed is the place where the center should be in our new system. And this new flangeback system is the 18 millimeters plus the 21 millimeters for the new adapter. So we have a smaller imaging circle to cover the APS-C sensor. So in summary, the image formed by the full frame lens is used as the object for the second lens in the Viltrox system here. It results in a smaller imaging circle big enough to cover the APS-C sensor. So that light from the lens is concentrated, gives us this brighter X to one stop.
Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found that useful. If it was over the heads of some of you, then I am going to put a write-up on my photographic blog with a little bit more uh, technical explanation of how these focal length reducers work with a lot more examples of the sort of shots you can get with them. So, as usual, thanks very much for watching. If you are a new viewer that stopped by to look at this particular video, and if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Click that bell notification icon and you'll get in a notification when I upload new videos to the channel. Also, check out my photographic blog, and again, I'll put a link to that in the video description below. You'll find lots more information on photography, particularly in bridge cameras, our Micro Four Third systems, and in course, the EOS M series cameras. So, as usual, thanks very much for watching. Please do take care, and I hope to see you all in my next video. Goodbye for now.